I never saw it. Jimi Hendrix, the closest thing I remember to him. That guy was so intense playing that instrument over there. <coughs> you don't want to run him out. That's all I'm telling you. Praise God. How's everybody doing? I asked the band over here if they knew she was bred in old Kentucky, but she's just a crumb up here. She, the girl said she never heard it. I said, it's on the flip side till I was engaged to a girl with a wooden leg, but her father broke it off. <laughs> he hadn't heard that one either, amen. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, good seeing everybody back for round two. Uh, I was going to preach uh, chapter two of the new book, but the uh, Lord said, no, put something else on my heart to preach. But I will tell you what, it, what it's about. When I got through my outline with my wife, Deep six, deep state, deep sleep, perfect three-point outline. You know, women can mess up a lot of stuff. Do you know that? <laughs> especially, when they're, especially when they're your proofreader. Yeah. She looked at that. She says, oh, I see a fourth point in that text, chapter 4, 2 Timothy. I said, there's no way. Don't you know every sermon's got three points in a poem? How could you have four points? She said, I see one in there. I said, there's no way. My book given by inspiration out there on the table, I've got uh, three pages of just paragraphs, three pages of threes, because God's a trinity. Right, right. We're body, soul, and spirit. Everything reflects God. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Anybody home? Yes, no, yes, no, maybe. Red light, green light, yellow light, mother, father, child, past, present, future. Yeah, right, right. Molary and curly. Say amen yeah. right there. <laughs> Every time you tell a stupid joke, you got three parts to it before you get to the punchline. Didn't you ever notice that? That, that, that? Then boom. Are you kidding? Hey, what's the, uh, here's, here's one of the most popular jokes in New Jersey. How, how come Italians can't count to ten? Because every time they get to two, they run into a tree. Amen. <laughs> I just got back from Louisiana last week. Try telling those jokes down there. Those people, they got their own language, amen, down there. <clears throat> I'm telling you, neighbor. So what so what'd your wife say? She said, it's right there. In verse 6 of 2 Timothy 4, Paul said, I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departure is at hand. Uh -huh. She said, that sounds like deep space to me. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do when your wife gets one up on you? Ain't that a pain? <laughs> yeah. We're getting ready to blow out of this joint. The next chapter two in my book is called The Trumpets Out of the Case. Yeah. And uh, it's all about the rapture. I have a 10-point outline. I was ready to preach it. Holy Ghost said, no. They're really, some of them people are really messed up. They need this other sermon. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the Lord said. But I, you know, I preached that sermon, Deep Six, Deep State, Deep Sleep, and Deep Space, out in the church in Missouri. And the preacher said, I'll give you a fifth point, Deep Dish, amen, for the millennium. I said, no, stupid, it has to have an S at the end. It can't dish. But the guy wrote me a $20,000 check to pay for the printing of the new book, so I'll, I'll put it in there. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm for sale, amen? All right, I don't know where we're going tonight. Uh, turn over your Bible somewhere. It's all good. Turn to Psalm 33. People think I'm trying to make money selling books. I don't need anybody's money. I got God. The same God that you have. Amen. I wiped out my Honda Pilot on November the 30th in Memphis, Tennessee, pulling into a church parking lot. Some nut ran into the back of my vehicle, and I thought he was a Mexican dude, so I walked up to him trying to have a good testimony. It was dark, late at night. I said, hey, mucho gusto en conocerle. I was going to give him a track. That means it gives me great honor to meet you, blah, blah, blah. He just looked at me like a calf looking at a new gate. I said, aren't you a, a Mexican dude? That's exactly what I said. Aren't you a Mexican dude? He said, no, I'm from Cambodia. I was waiting for Rambo to jump out of a bush, amen? <laughs> you know, God takes care of his servants. I got stuck overnight in that church. I had to go to a Hampton Inn. It was a visitor that night from West Point, graduate of West Point. Some guy visited, threw me in, put me up in a Hampton Inn, had his wife and children drive me to the airport the next morning with a little basket, Little love offering there, hundred dollars, five hundred dollar check in there. God's take, God's men get cared for. We're all, we're all right. We don't have to try to, you know, shake hands like a mission. We don't shake hands like missionaries. Hey, that's a joke. 
The very next, my car is still getting ripped. My Honda's still being repaired. So I've been stealing my wife's Chrysler. She's ready to divorce me. But the very first week, I was on my own without my vehicle. Pulled into a church. And a uh, man come up to me. My wife was with me. Walked right up to me. Said, Lord told us we're supposed to help you get a new Honda. Wrote me a $15,000 check. I got a picture on my phone if you think I'm making that up. Lord's good. We're all right. Amen. Yeah, right. Amen. Praise God. My name is Jimmy. I'll take all you give me. Amen. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Psalm 33. Psalm 33. And we'll read two verses. Why don't we stand for the reading of God's Amen. word? We'll read one verse in Psalm 33, then we'll jump over to Psalm 50. Ready now? Mm -hmm. One verse. Psalm 33, verse 1. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. For the upright. Mm -hmm. Now watch that word upright and go to Psalm 50. Psalm 50, verse 23, one of the greatest verses in the Psalms. Verse 23, whoso offereth praise. Your praise is generally connected to the offerings you make to God. You know what an offering is? I would say 40 years before I figured it out. That's when you take something as near to perfect as you can find and destroy it for no reason. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation, look at the next word. All right, will I show the salvation of God. Mm. Praise is upright. Or praise is comely for the upright. Mm -hmm. He that ordereth his conversation, all right, mm. will I show the salvation of God. Father, we sure do love you. Uh, you. And I pray that you'll help us. Thank you for the good spirit in this place. The old time religion from North Carolina, Mordecai Ham religion, still around, not very many places. Thank you for the uplifted spirit I had from that very first congregational song in Sunday school, How My Spirit Soared. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord for a mature young man who's able to lead that singing like that. Pray you'll bless us now and commit the day to thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. You all know what the word upright means? How many of you are upright? You're not, if you're not upright, you're down wrong. Say amen right there. You're either upright or down wrong. If you're upright, praise is comely for you. What does comely mean? It's an old word. If you look it up in a Webster's Dictionary, 1828, it means a, a pleasant, suitable, proper, or becoming. Another word that could kind of encapsulate all those words would be appropriate. Hey, are you upright? Mm -hmm. Then praise should be your second yeah, nature. Right, right. It should be normal for you. Yes. Amen. Sitting in a barber chair where in Maryville, Tennessee, where I live, and the guy sitting next to me, they got to talk, and I could hear the older guy heard him say, he said he was 95 years old. Barber says, hey, we got a policy in this barber shop. When you hit 100, we give you free haircuts. <laughs> the guy had an Iwo Jima survivor hat on his head. I broke my arm. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Getting my wallet out of yes, my sir. pants when he got out of that chair. Yes, yeah, right. yes, sir. Wouldn't you have done that? Yes, sir. I, led a, I led a vice president of Dort Federal Credit Union to the Lord when I was pastoring in Michigan. Baptized her. She was worried about her mother and father. Went and visited them. He was an Iwo Jima survivor. Mm -hmm. I was privileged to lead both of them to the Lord. He had me preach his funeral not long after that. I gave the Battle of Iwo Jima for a eulogy. Mm. Played the Marine Corps hymn in the funeral home. Blew everybody's mind. Mm. So that's two Iwo Jima survivors I've been able to talk with. Mm. But this guy at the barber chair followed him out to the uh, car. His car found that he was a saved Lutheran, old school Lutheran. Mm. I asked him, I said, can you tell me something about the Battle of Iwo Jima that you're not going to hear on the History Channel? Very humbly he said, well, when they raised that flag, he said, I was on the beach, laying on the sand, and all the captains and the admirals on the ships in the bay out there had high-powered binoculars, and they could see it pretty quick when it went up. And pretty much right away, the, the horns and the sirens and the blast off the ships began 
roaring, and it was so loud, it was literally hurting our ears on the beach. I, he said, I was laying down there, jamming my hands against my ears. It was so loud. So, so what's that all about? Well, it's about that verse in an application. Praise is comely for the upright. Amen. See, six of those men that raised that flag, I think, I believe there were six, at least half of those men would be dead in a few weeks. That praise was up appropriate for what they did. I was preaching in Tuscaloosa, Alabama the other day. There's a man sitting off here on my left, 95 years old too. Remember John Wayne, the movie The Fighting Seabees? A real fighting Seabee. Survivor of the Battle of Okinawa. 2,200 kamikaze attacks. What's the name of that movie that was out recently about Heartbreak Ridge? Or what was that movie when they, that, uh, that chaplain or that medic didn't want to carry a gun? Hacksaw Ridge, that's that battle. That's a survivor right down here. 95 years old. Pastor told me, Pastor Delaney down here, you may know him, <clears throat> told me he's the best man in this church. Oh, by the way, they buried his wife the previous Wednesday. He's driving in Sunday by himself. Right in the middle of COVID, no mask, just sitting there. Try selling Amway to that dude. Ain't gonna happen anytime soon. My father-in-law was a survivor of the D-Day invasion, second wave, Omaha Beach, June 6th. I asked him about the election. He said when Biden moved into the White House that very day, he went out in the backyard of his house and took his flag down, turned it upside down and ran it back up upside down. He said the neighborhood basically went nuts. And he basically implied he didn't take a baby aspirin over. That crowd's leaving the, leaving the scene, isn't it? How, have any of you ever been on, up in the Washington Monument? Raise your hand if you've been up in the one. All right, how many ever heard of the Washington Monument? How many don't give a flip? <laughs> you go up to the top of that monument, it's 555 feet tall, and on the very top, it's got an aluminum cap, and on the east side are two Latin words, Laos Deo. And that means praise be to God. Highest point in our capital. And there's lots of devilish things there and lots of scripture in there. I have an entire chapter in my red book out there, How Satan Turned America Against God, called The Battle for Washington, D.C. It's, it's a spiritual battle. <clears throat> Somebody said the devil's always looking for a place to spit. Yeah, right, right. But when I, I preached this sermon in uh, August in New Hampshire, and I was with the preacher going down the road, and he said, uh, Brother Grady, on Facebook tonight, we had a comment come in from some viewer criticizing your sermon. He said, what else is new? <laughs> and I said, what did he say? He said, well, he quoted to me. He said, the guy said, Brother Grady, you sh of all people, you, you should have known better about that Washington Monument, 555 feet. He said, you know, the foundation is 111 feet down, <coughs> underground. So 111 and 555, 666. I knew the guy was a nut as soon as I heard that. Anybody gets into those things is usually nuts. <laughs> Trust me, I've been around nuts my whole life. Yeah. Rodney Dangerfield said in his English class, they'd ask, what comes after a sentence? The kid said, an appeal, amen. I grew up with crazy people. <laughs> Man, while he's still driving, I put my cigarette down and picked up my smartphone. Come on, folks. I said, what's the, what's the depth of the Washington Monument Foundation? 37 feet. Yeah. I know the guy was nuts. Yeah. But you know what he told me? He said, another guy saw that, and he typed in. This is a guy from Missouri. He said, uh, I saw, you know, basically I saw what that other idiot said. He said, let me tell you something. I appreciated that sermon, which is the sermon I'm preaching right now tonight, uh, this morning to you. He said, I appreciate that message. I needed it. He said, I will remember that message to my dying breath. Found out later that guy was in stage four cancer mm. on his deathbed. Mm. Which, which comment do you think meant more to me? Yeah, right, right. Praise is comely for the upright. Mm -hmm. Do you praise God the way that you should? 
Are you as good at it as you could be? You might want to get as good as you can get at anything. Right. Why is that? I don't know. Maybe the world's coming to an end would be yeah. a starting point. Yeah. The Bible says, when a man's ways please the Lord, yes, sir. he maketh even his enemies to be at peace yes, with him. Sir. Do you know who the last enemy you're going to face is? Paul told you in Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Death. Yeah. Wouldn't you want God pleased with you? You know, the Lord wants us to praise Him more all the time. And, and by the way, I'm glad I came down south. I learned more about the Holy Ghost down here. Go into the tabernacle, neighbor. Come into the east gate. Come on in here. Look to the right. That's north. That's where they got the table of showbread. Look to the left. That's south. That's where the lampstand is. There's the... There's the... Uh, uh, um, what do you call it? That's my Biden impersonation if you weren't here in Sunday school. If I stutter, it's my Biden impersonation. The, 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 the uh, Mason-Dixon line run right through there. That's the north, that's the south. Up north, they usually got their doctrine more straight than the south. South can be messed up. That's why I said you're spoiled when you look at all those Ruckman commentaries in the lobby of this church. But see, over here, they got the, they got the light down here. You can spit and people get saved in the south half the time. Am I right, preacher? Bob Jones Sr. was preaching one time in a church in Alabama. He's, he's standing in the back of the church and like the pulpit's up there and his young preacher was waxing eloquent on Luke 16 but he had the rich man in heaven and Lazarus burning in hell, you know? Mm -hmm. See, half the folks didn't get that. Yeah. Very scary. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Jones Sr. starts going like this. Yeah. Yeah. Try to get, and the kid thought he was egging him on, you know? <laughs> yeah, and Lazarus burned for like a Jimmy Dean sauce with everybody. You know? <laughs> And he gave the invitation like 20 people got saved. You know, that's how it is down south. <laughs> Jimmy Robbins in Cal Penn, South Carolina, told me, uh, you know, uh, uh, Percy Ray, they were close friends. The, the Elijah of the 20th century, the Elijah of the, he had more weird doctrines, he believed, though. Yeah. Our millennial Southern Baptist. But boy, they had the power down in the south. Right. Up north, they got the You're nurseries. Right. Right. They got the nurseries, but no uh, prayer rooms. Down south, they got the prayer rooms, but no nursery. Yeah. Usually, there's 50 babies going nuts in any service yeah. in the south. Yeah. Preacher says, I can out-preach those babies. Yeah. But up north, they realize some unsafe Catholic visitor sitting behind that baby might not be able to out-listen. Right. 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 You got to get them both together. Yeah. Jack Howes used to say, I never saw a theologian who could preach or an evangelist who could read and write. Amen. <laughs> <coughs> You know what the difference is between a Yankee and a Southerner, by the way, don't you? Listen, I'm speaking with authority. I grew up in New York, New York, and married a girl from Virginia. Say amen right there. Yeah. A, a, a Southerner can be patting you on the back while he's planning your funeral. Say amen yeah, right there. Right. Exactly right. Bless your heart. Yeah. They, don't call, they don't call it the deep south for nothing. Yeah. But a Yankee can walk into a cancer ward and say, what's eating you, bub? Yeah. You know, they both need some work. Say amen right there. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So the Lord wants you to learn to praise him more and more because you, you might, hey, by the way, no commercial, but that book on Israel there, mm -hmm. that might increase your lifespan. How's that for a commercial? Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. Maybe because of the verse I quoted here. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh his enemies to be. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? Teach us how to pray, Lord. Yeah, right. All right. You want to learn how to pray? Take some notes. Yeah. When you pray, go like this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Yeah. Thy will be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then get around to asking for your daily bread. Yeah. Thy kingdom come. If God knows you're on the same page with him, you may get a little closer with him. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. yeah, that's good. I was free. Turn to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation 4. God wants you to praise him yes, more and more. Yeah. And he's got one of the wildest classroom scenes here for you. You got four wild teachers. And listen, and listen, uh, never uh, compare your pastor to an outside speaker, especially an evangelist. I only have about 12 sermons. Say amen right there. Your preacher's got to come up with four new messages every week of his life while he's burying your dead and praying for the sick and marrying your young. Follow me? And all we got to I got we 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 get to tweak sermons. I've preached this sermon hundreds of times. This one, it's tweak, man. 
It ought to get the results. And it's not a normal sermon like he's going to preach. Anything else, preacher? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, Revelation 4. What's going to happen when you close your eyes and, and meet the Lord? What are you going to see first? Oh, I'm going to see my old dog Shep. You know, you've got all these different songs. Hey, I fell on my knees and cried holy. You know, the guy's talking about walking around heaven, being shown St. Peter's house and Paul's house. Finally says, but that's all nice, but can I see Jesus now? Yeah, yeah. Cool song. Yeah, right. Yeah. Meet my wife at the Eastern Gate. You know, I mean, I'm not against those songs. Yeah. So why do you keep doing that? I'm an ex-Catholic. Hey, you Protestants, get off the grass. <laughs> I'm, I'm flying to Michigan in two weeks or something like that. For two week, two time, two times ago I was there. I did this in a starting a week long revival. Some lady sitting on the back row runs a dry cleaning business in town. A lifelong Episcopalian. Just visited the church because somebody invited her. First time in the church sitting on the back row, and I keep doing this. She's an Episcopalian. Somebody said an Episcopalian is a Catholic who flunk Latin. She thought I was being sincere, and she was looking at me and watching. I kept her attention until she got, came down and got saved. Amen. Amen. Crazy. Hey, you Protestants, get off of the grass. <laughs> any ex-Catholics in here hardly? One, two. Any, any ex-Catholics from the South? Those are my Yankee friends. Amen. How many have ever met a Catholic down here? One. <laughs> People are so spoiled. Talk to me. <laughs> All right. What are you going to see when you open your eyes? Verse 1. <clears throat> After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. That's John. He's a type of the church because he's yeah. a disciple whom Jesus loved. Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And immediately I was in the spirit. And my old, my old hound dog met me. I met my wife. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. You'll find that word throne 15 to 20 times in that next, the rest of that chapter and into chapter 5. But the throne's not important. It's the one on the throne. And one sat on the throne. Now I have a sermon, and it's in my new book called God's Preeminent Stone. It deals with precious stones in the Bible and priest's uh, breastplate. And... Uh, Really, the chapter is called Black Lives Matter. When you read it, your hair will stand up on the back of your neck. And um, in that chapter, I talk about these precious stones. Well, anyway, <clears throat> some lady from a church in Lexington, Kentucky, uh, her husband's a deacon. church is pastored by one of my former students. Uh, they sent me, uh, the lady called me. She said, Brother Grady, uh, I, I, I heard your sermon on the stones, and I thought you'd like to know something that, geologists have just recently discovered. She has a degree in geology from the University of Kentucky. She said all precious stones are divided into two classes. They either have this, this particular element in the stone or they do not. Oh, I forget the stinking word. It's like that long and I'm a non-technical dude. Uh, blah, blah, blah. If they have it, it's anis, anis isotrophic, A-N-I-S-O-T-R-O-P-I-C. If they don't have that particular uh, element, they drop the A-N off. It's just isotropic. Isotrophic or anisotrophic. Whether this element is in the stone. That ain't going to mean anything to you. <clears throat> if, that, if that stone has that element, you cut a little sliver off that stone and put it under a new high-powered microscope that they've developed, and then put direct light on it, like a solar beam, ray gun, ray light. This is indirect light. You put direct light on it, it's something new they've been able to do. And put it under that microscope, if it has that element, it blows up like a kaleidoscope of color. If you put a, sli a, a, a slither in there from a, from a stone that does not have that element, it goes dark when the light comes on it. Hey, girls. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Diamonds don't have that element. You want to hear a coinky dinky? How's this for a coinky dinky? Revelation 22 lays out the New Jerusalem, shows you those 12 foundations. Each foundation is garnished with its own stone, rubies, 
Emerald, right? Right up like that. How's this for coinky dinky? Every one of those 12 stones happens to have that element in it. How did the Apostle John, a, an ignorant fisherman, an illiterate fisherman from 2,000 years ago, pick 12 out of 12? I can hear my dad now. Play that number. He's a, he's a bookie. Some of you folks know what that is. Growing up, he, I, he was. Okay, neighbor. Let me ask you a question. Anybody know what an emerald stone is? Of course, well, most of you know. What color is an emerald? It's the only stone, one of the few stones, that has no variation. It's all green or it's not an emerald. Verse 2. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. One sat on a throne. Look at verse 3. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. Colon. Watch. And there was a what? Rainbow round about the throne. In sight, like you'd have to be there to see it. In sight, like unto an what? Yeah. yeah. Brother, it's a gigantic emerald right behind the Lord Jesus. But with all that light coming off of him, looks like a rainbow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. An emerald has that stone, that element in it. Ain't that something? I think heaven's going to be a beautiful place. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment. And they had on their head, heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. By the way, most people get all shook up when they hear, boom, right? You ever see your dogs run for their lives? Yeah, yeah. But let me tell you something, neighbor. If you hear that boom, you better shout it out. That means the lightning missed you. Say amen. Yeah, amen. That's right. <clears throat> and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Why they have those seven lamps burning there? Usually you picture that because you're warming yourself. What time do you go to bed? You got those lamps over here. He's yawning in the Holy Ghost. But they were laughing at my jokes, so they're okay now. <laughs> Jack Howe said, if I don't pick on you, I don't care about I don't appreciate you. You got those lamps, you got to warm yourself by the lamps. What's that all about? Look at verse 6. And before the throne there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal. It's one of the most beautiful things to tell you what heaven's like. Mm. Now again, with all those Ruckman books out there, you folks are light years ahead of the average independent fundamental church, and I mean that. So you probably know this, but not everybody would know it. When Paul was killed, where did he go? Which heaven? He went to the third heaven. Atmosphere, clouds, right. birds, stratosphere, stars. Right. And there's a third heaven where God dwells, right? right. Sure. But you don't, let, you don't think God's going to get that close to filthy man, do you? Mm. So he's got a buffer zone above that second heaven. That's why Russia's all mad about the Ukraine going to NATO. Ukraine and Eastern Europe is always that buffer. Mm. Germany's the historic enemy of Russia. And Stalin wanted a, a middle ground there. That's what those satellite uh, um, Iron Curtain countries were all about. Well, God's at least as smart as Stalin was. Yeah. Turn to Psalm 148, would you? You know, the people that make fun of the King James position, the fundamentalist crowd, a lot of them, they tell you that when, the, when you had the Genesis flood, all this water that was above the earth, the water canopy came down, flooded the earth out. You've heard that before. Where did you get that from? Genesis chapter 2. When, when the earth was being create, recreated, probably with the gap theory, remember what it said, it sep or Genesis 1, separated the water from the water. Look, 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 look. And this became this, the firmament. Yeah. Then this water below was pulled back and the earth appeared. Mm -hmm. So you got the earth, the water, the firmament. Yeah. What about up here? Right. Still up there. Right. Well, all these Bible deniers tell you that water came down when the flood that's how the earth got flooded. Well, the Bible says the uh, Lord opened the fountains of the de great deep. And uh, there was plenty of other rain that came down. Now, look at Psalm 148 real quick. We're talking about praising God, right? Look at the context, Psalm 148, 1. The key is that this is written by David. All right? All right, verse 1. Praise you the Lord. Praise you the Lord from the heavens. Plural, see that? 
Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all your angels. Praise him, all your hosts. Praise him, your sun and moon. Praise him, all your stars of light. Now, put your seatbelt on, neighbor. Let me, ask, let me ask you a question. Was David before the flood or after the flood? Quick answer the right way or I'll get depressed. Thank you. After the flood. Correct? Well, somebody should have told him all that water came down with the flood from above his head. Look at verse 4. Praise him, ye heavens and, and heaven. Praise ye, he, praise ye heaven, heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be at what? Thank you very much. Elvis has left the building. When David wrote that, those waters were still up there. And when all of you go through your Old Testament, take a concordance out. Look up the word deep. Tell me, talk about the great deep. That's that great body of water up there separating the second heaven from the third heaven. And that's why these astronauts, or if they're Russians, they're cosmonauts, get in their space ships. Heading that way. Now, you know what Job says? The top of the deep is frozen. How many of you realize that the advantage of living in the south is that it's warmer weather down here? I got a good, I preach in New York State every June. I, I went to 17 churches in one swing last time I was up there. And preachers are always crying to me in a funny way. They say, preacher, we can't get preachers to come up here to take churches. I said, what's the problem? He said, two problems, Cuomo and the, smo- and the snow. Yeah. So they got rid of Cuomo, and they got somebody in there worse than Cuomo. And his- yeah. God I lived in Michigan for nine years. The snow stays on the ground three months a year. You all know what I'm talking about down south? It's, it's not as cold as up north. Right. Well, you go all the way to the top, neighbor. Job told you the top of the deep is frozen. That's what that verse is talking about up there in Revelation. Isn't that beautiful? That crystal sea, that's what it looks like. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. Heard an old preacher say one time, Pastor, he said, I used to think when the devil was talking to God in Job 1, I I used to wonder why would God let that filthy animal in his presence? And then he heard another preacher say, God was just talking to that cockroach right through the glass. Mm. Right through that ice. He wouldn't let that cockroach up there in his presence. It's it's glass. So beautiful up there. Cold up there. Yeah. They got those seven lamps burning. Mm -hmm. All right, are you ready for your instruction now? Want to praise God more? Somebody said if we'd praise God more, we'd have more to praise God for. Verse 6, and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Here's your four instructors I'm giving you. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy. <clears throat> Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the Lord, or before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure. They are and were created. I'm telling you, neighbor, I preach this sermon everywhere, and every time I preach it, God uses it. Every time. That's the advantage an evangelist has. You're you're experimenting in a way, preacher. I pastored two churches. Every week you got a new sermon. You know what I hit at the doorway? I liked that sermon this morning, preacher, but tonight was a lot better. They can't both be the same. One's got to come in second. But evangelists, we get to use these sermons like Jack Isle said, uh, 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 what's the uh, what's the word? Uh, a, a wrench, greasy wrench. A sermon's meant to fix things. It's practical, yeah. and this is a message God always uses. And I pro- listen. Can I tell you something? I promise you, this sermon can absolutely change your life, especially point three. I promise you, if you get it. 
Imagine me making a big speech like that and flopping. No more Italian jokes till tonight. Number one, praise is elementary. Yes, sir. Praise is elementary. Seven times these creatures are called beasts. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a blue blood mm -hmm. to praise God in some appropriate way for him. Yeah. Amen. Any old right. hound dog yep. can do it. Yes, sir. Let me tell you how complicated it is. Mm -hmm. It's 14 words. Yeah. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, that is, and is to, to, to come. Anybody have a problem memorizing 14 words? Mm. These creatures have been repeating that for 6,000 stinking years. He says, that vain repetition is not that. You know what vain repetition is? Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us now at the hour of our death, amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Jack, Peter Ruckman said the funniest thing one time, preacher, he said he was out soul winning and he came to a door, and the lady that answered the door was some sophisticated gal. Anybody remember Mrs. Thurston Howell III from Gilligan's Island, you know, with the glasses on the stick? And he's trying to get, get her lost, to get her saved. And she, she, you know, she didn't do anything wrong, kind of lady. Finally, Dr. Ruckman gave up in frustration. He said, he said ma'am, before I go, can I ask you one last question? She said, certainly, Reverend. He said, are you ungodly? She almost had a heart attack. He said, oh, my soul, Reverend, I should hope not. He said, that's too bad. The Bible says Christ died for the ungodly. Have a nice day. Close the Bible and walk down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, yeah. praise is elementary. Yeah. That's good news. Anybody yeah. can do it. That's right. Exactly right. Yeah, thank God. You, can't, you can't carry a tune in a bucket? Good. The Lord talks about giving a joyful noise. He'll take that. Here you go, neighbor, ready? Number two, boy, this is getting good now. Two and three are going to kill you. You understand? Two is a left cross. Three is a right hook. Are you listening, neighbor? Number two, praise is positional. Praise is positional. Look how the Holy Ghost tells you where these creatures were located. Look at it, man. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts. Look, look. One, two, three, four. Don't miss what I'm getting ready to say right now. Do you know why the Holy Spirit wants you to recognize where he put those creatures? Yeah, hello. They're just the closest created beings to God's very person in the entire universe. They're closer than Gabriel and Michael. And God's saying, hello, wake up, wake up, don't miss it. What are they doing there? Praising me. Yeah. Maybe I like praise enough to put four creatures that close to me mm. to give me what I want. Mm. Uh, maybe if you'd do that, you'd get a little closer to them. Amen. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Did you get it? Good. Right. Good. Want a verse? How about a verse? Draw nigh to God. Yeah. Yep. He'll draw nigh yes. to thee. Yes. Yes. I mean, you never can tell. Bible could be true. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Bible could be true, yes. That's right. Praise is positional. George Whitfield and John Wesley, those two famous English preachers in the 18th century, had a fallen out, then they got it back. They got it right. But their followers kept fighting, like Abraham and Lot's herdsmen. Mm -hmm. One of these little kiss-up, sink of fat kind of guys from Wesley came up to John Wesley. He said, Mr. Wesley, when we get to heaven, do you think we shall see Mr. Whitfield there? <laughs> and Wesley said, no, I don't believe we will. Guy got all excited and asked the question, you know. And then, with, then Wesley completed a statement that he's going to be so close to the throne. Mm. Mm. My, my, my. Okay. Mm. Good. Hey, man, forget those lose weight That's resolutions good. on New Year's Day. Forget yeah. about it. They never work. Yeah. You read your Bible through, you bomb out by February in Leviticus. These, 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 these resolutions are tough. Let me give you an easy one, neighbor. How about make a resolution, I want to just get closer to God this year. You want to get closer to them? All you got to do is increase your praise time. That's good. What am I talking about? You, you girls and you guys, and <clears throat> when you're by yourself, I don't mean when you're in Sunday school when you're sitting there got to act spiritual. I mean when you're by yourself. Yeah. When nobody's around you. You're looking yeah. up to the sky and talking out loud to God left and right. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, that's good. Preaching the word. 
Man, my children talk about when I was a teacher at, J at Jack House College and they were just little. They'd look out the window, midnight, one in the morning, see me out there, and they said I was in my boxers. I mean, I don't want to seem crazy here, but there was nobody that could see me in the dark yard. I'd jump out there if I was in an excited mood reading my Bible. And still, I might be in my pajama bottoms or something. I'd be out there. He said, some crazy person out there looking up in the sky, yelling, not yelling, but talking to somebody in the sky. My kids talk about that when they were real little. They're looking through the window at me out in the yard. They said, you must have really been believing somebody was up there, they said. Amen. Praise is positional. Now, 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 wait a minute. Let me ask you a question. Did Adam have a belly button? Yes or no? What came first, the chicken or the egg? How about a dog chasing his tail? Can I give you a mystery to solve a mystery for me? You solve a mystery, right? Hey, chicken or the egg, ready? Praise is living in God's presence. Or more precisely, praise is the conscious awareness of God's presence. You see, you look up to the sky, you won't do that unless you're really realizing he's looking at you. Yeah. He's up there. Yeah. But if you're on your stick and phone 24-7, yeah. you're not thinking of God. Yeah. The Bible says when you see these things come to pass, lift up your heads. That's right. Look at everybody today. Yeah. Difference between you and a stinking animal is an animal was put on four legs. He looks down. Man was put on Amen. two legs. So yeah. we can look up. So look at the end age. Look. Amen. All right. So Amen. praise is the conscious awareness of God's presence, right? But here comes the chicken of the egg. But here's a mystery now, or a fancy word, a conundrum. Explain this to me. And yet, <clears throat> your praise is what brings you into God's presence. Turn to Psalm 100. Which one is it? Yeah. Which one triggers which one? I can't figure it out. Can you? This is a beautiful truth. Psalm 100, real quick. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. There's all you folks that can't carry a tune in a bucket, maybe. Verse 2, serve the Lord with gladness. Look at Psalm 102. Come before his presence. How? With singing. Know you that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not ourselves. Look at verse 4. Here it is. Look. Enter into his gates. What? With thanksgiving. And into his courts with what? Praise brings you into God's presence. Yeah, right. But praise is the awareness of his God's presence. Yeah, Ain't that something? Yeah. Which one is it, neighbor? Mm. All right, here comes the knockout. Did I promise you a knockout? Yeah. The second point I just gave you is supposed to get you ready. Here comes the knockout. If you're half you know, lukewarm, this can bounce you up a little bit if you want to get bounced up. Get ready, neighbor. Number, th number one, praise is elementary. Number two, it's positional. Number three, praise is diverse. Diversity is the world's favorite word, and they don't have a stinking clue what it means. It may be the most important message, lesson in a pointless message. Each of the four beasts are radically different from one another. Right, right. Am, am, did I imagine that, or did I read that? First beast like a lion, verse 7. Second like a calf. Third like a face of a man. Fourth beast like a flying eagle. How could you get those confused? They're all different. That's right. All right, get ready, neighbor. Oh, please get ready. I love this sermon for one more than anything else because of this one point when I start to explain this because I see eyes that lighten up. Really, honestly. You think I'm going to waste my time? I've been preaching 48 and a half years. Think I have a hard time finding two sermons? Yeah. Like for today, first time I'm at your church. Yeah. This is the one I know God's been using a lot with people to help them. No two snowflakes Amen. are the same. Is that right? Yeah. No two grains of sand. No two stars are the same. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Jack Hiles, bless his heart, my pastor for 15 different years, he didn't know the difference between right division and a right hook. Yeah. But he knew everything else. Yeah. He was real shallow on doctrine. Didn't know any better. Yep. But he sure loved his people and helped his people. Yep. And do you know what he beat into our heads 24 hours a day? This can change your life if you get it. I know this is the South, and you're good at shouting, and you've learned some good doctrine from him, but you can always learn more, right? Amen. Yeah. 
Get ready to go over the top if you want to go. Ready? He beat it into our heads that we are designers' models. We're a designer model. When God made you, he threw the mold That's away. Right. That's right. But here's the key to the whole thing, neighbor. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Here's the key to the whole thing. Don't miss it. He gave every single one of you your own unique spiritual personality just for him. We are created for his pleasure. That's how that chapter ends, Revelation 4. What does that mean? Don't pass out when you get it. You have a way to, sat to satisfy God's personal needs that nobody in this entire world has. He made you unique to give him something nobody else can yes, give. Sir. So he can get five billion That's different good. ways to be pleasure. Yeah, amen. That's good. And if you don't praise him, he's not going to get something he wants. Mm. Nobody can give him what you can give him. That's good. You think I'm crazy? Listen to this. I preached in Oklahoma last year. Came back to my church in Tennessee. I mean, my home in Tennessee, throw a bank deposit in, you know, preacher? Got a phone call an hour later. Reverend, you slept this $100 bill that was counterfeit. <coughs> they know me, you know. I said, I did. I said, where is that thing? She said, the FBI's got it. Holy mackerel. I, haven't an I didn't answer my phone for six months. <laughs> <coughs> but I preached in uh, Glasgow, Kentucky the next week, told that story. Some truck driver gave me a $100 bill in the lobby to compensate me. Yeah, yeah. So I've been telling that story in every church ever yeah. since. <laughs> but there was a lady in that church that worked at the IRS or with the FBI, a retired lady, something like that. We got talking about that counterfeit stuff. Are you listening, neighbor? You know what we wound up talking about? You want to see how right on the money I am with this point? Look, didn't Timothy, doesn't Timothy tell you how to praise God? Because Paul told him how to praise God. What did he tell him? Where's my song leader back here? What's your name, dude? Aaron. Who? Aaron. My man, Aaron, Bible name. Look. What did he tell you to do? Lift up Lifting up what? Johnny Pope, one of my teachers at Howes Anderson in the 1970s, he said, it's okay to raise hands. Not know yeah. if they think you're half yeah. nuts. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. I was, I'm a Yankee. I know that. Mm. But I learned the difference. Johnny Pope said, Raising your hand is Bible. He said, the key is, where's the palms at? Yeah. If they're inside, look out. Outside, it's okay. Yeah. Isn't, that a, isn't that a crazy thought? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, neighbor, look. Lifting up holy hands, yes. Yeah. Look, look. Hello, anybody home? Anybody getting there yet? What did that FBI lady tell me? What did she tell me? No, what? No two fingerprints are the same. When you put those holy hands up, you're saying, hello, Lord, it's me. Can you get that? That's good. Amen. Anybody have an up and down time? Anybody have an up and down time? Hot and cold? You know, I do sometime, right? Preachers are messed up. You're messed up. We're messed up. Which is not as messed up as you. We'd be out of a job if we were as messed up as you are. Lifting up holy hands. Yeah. So I get up and down, cold time. You know what I'll tell the Lord sometime? Ready? Ready? I'll say, hey, Lord, it's me, bipolar Bill. <laughs> he likes that because nobody else could say. You ever hear pre preachers say things and you say, how could he say that? Yeah. You see me? What, what Italian joke you want, Lord? <laughs> Tony and Vinny. See, I'm, I'm acting like the Lord is talk, telling me to tell you an Italian joke. You're sitting up there saying, Heresy, what an abomination. But the Lord and I have a funny thing going. Did you ever see Crocodile Dundee? Me and God are mates. There's more truth in that than probably in your head. Tony and Vinny are going through the woods, two Italian hitmen late at night. Owls are hooting, the moon's out. Finally, Tony says to Vinny, he says, You know, Vinny, <clears throat> as good a friend as you and I is, I don't mind admitting to you, I'm kind of scared out here tonight. And Vinny says to Tony, he says, You're scared, I got to walk out of here alone in about 10 minutes. Say amen. <laughs> Now watch this. You see, I have a personality through my life that yeah. developed through circumstances, You're things right. God let me go through. And me and God, yeah. when we fellowship, we have a fun time together. And I've got my own crazy way that he loves. Yeah. Yeah, right. He loves yeah. it, neighbor. Good. And you've got one too yeah. is a dumb thing and you're not using it. Right. Yeah. You wake up in the morning, sleepy boogers yeah. in your eyes, 
You know, and he that guardeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. The God of the universe has been up all night, look, waiting for you to open your eyes. And what do you do? Instead of saying, I love you, Lord, what do you do? Look, you, you reach over there for your stupid phone to see if you got any more likes from that video from letting you post the last night of a squirrel pushing a beach ball down the sand of the, of the ocean. You only had six likes. Look, the, the creator of the universe couldn't wait for you to wake up. Yeah. There you are. You said, preacher, you said some bad things about Joe Biden in Sunday school. The Bible says you're supposed to not speak evil of dignitaries. It says that, I believe. Well, how come you did it? You don't want to know what the Lord put on my heart. Either the devil put this on my heart or the Lord. I think it was the Lord. My wife disagrees with me. God wouldn't tell you that, but she has her own personality. She didn't grow up like I did. Rodney Dangerfield said his school was so tough after they sacked the quarterback, they go after his family next. Amen? <laughs> There's a difference between growing up in New York City and growing up in Sanford, Virginia, population 100. I, I got a lot of voices in my head. I don't know who's who half the time. So, there's always somebody that comes up to you when Obama was president. Did you pray for the president today? Remember them kind of weasels? Yeah, I prayed that, the Lord, that the, somebody else would take his office. Yeah, right. That's a prayer. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you, you say, you know, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm every homeschool mother's worst nightmare, I'm telling you. you. I don't know, here's the first family, Biden and his wife and Kamala and the other, COVID. <laughs> <coughs> I shouldn't have put this here, preacher, but I put bullet Trump train derailed by train wreck administration of Amtrak Joe and his Carmel caboose, amen right there, <laughs> forcing Bible believers to refocus their attention on the one whose train filled the temple. Yeah, yeah. And then, quote, every nation eventually ends up with the government it deserves, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Peter S. Ruckman. Yeah. Say, how could you put that stuff in there? Here's what came into my head from somewhere. Yeah. Are you ready? You're not going to believe this. I tell this crazy illustration to show you that we're all individuals with our God. Yeah, yeah. And we have our, how could he get away with that? He can, you couldn't. Because yeah, right. God knows how crazy he is, and yeah. he gets a kick out of some of this stuff. Yeah, right. Boy, this is hard to preach this. Yeah, right. It really is. Good. Excuse me. So what's your, what's your answer for that? You shouldn't speak evil of dignitaries. Are they my rewards to lose if I want to forfeit them at the judgment seat? Yeah. I'll give up a few just to slam Biden. I know he's a bum because he stole my customer's wife. Yeah. You weren't here in Sunday school, you missed the story. Yeah. But, but I think the Lord put on my heart. Ready for this? is where my wife and I fight about this. She thinks I'm nuts. I think the Lord put on my heart, Bill, it's okay. I got to take, take those rewards away from you in front of everybody, but I'll give them back to you in the back room because I feel the guy's a bum too. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? I feel that. I believe that in my little crazy head. And I think I hear the Lord laughing when I tell this silly illustration. <laughs> Don't wake me up. I'm in my own bubble. But the truth is still the truth that you are a designer's model. And I used to think when I get to heaven, D.L. Moody's going to have all of God's time, man. I'm just a nobody compared to Moody. Then this thought dawned on me. When I get to heaven, I'm going to see what I'm telling you about now. We're all unique, and God wants all of us for himself. Nobody's any different. I mean, we're all different from one another. Yeah. So why don't you get in on that now? Yeah. Amen. Praise is positional. Number four, praise is voluntary. Yes, it is. Praise is voluntary. Yeah. You, know what those, uh, you know what those creatures have? Listen, mm -hmm. those creatures have, they're different, but they, both, they have two things in common, even though they're different. The first thing they have in common is they have six wings. Mm -hmm. Why does God tell you they got wings? You know why? Because God's not a Calvinist. Yeah. He's not chaining them to that throne, preacher. Yeah. You guys want to leave? Go ahead if you want to leave. Yeah. Amen. They don't want to leave. Yeah. No, sir. They want to stay with them. Amen. Listen, neighbor, God is not going to beat you over the head, mm -hmm. make you praise him. He wants you to do it because yeah. you love him. Yeah. What did David say? When I consider the sun and the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art even mindful of him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excuse me for breathing, but do you know what takes place during the Lord's Supper? What did the Lord say? As oft as you do it, it's up to the local church. Do it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Anybody home? Yeah. Yeah, right. The creator of the universe is worried about you forgetting him. I was only saved three months, preacher. Philadelphia, 1974. 
when I'm reading my Bible the very first time, my wife gave me a Bible for a wedding present on my wedding day. Catholic husband got saved a week later. And I'm reading out of the Gospel of Luke, the disciples on the road to Emmaus. You know what it said? He said Jesus made as though he would go further. That's right. That's right. He wanted to have lunch with those guys, a dinner in the worst way, but he wasn't going to shake hands like a missionary. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, the psalm says. Amen, brother. Yeah. So, he, so, he, so they say, would you come on in here, Jesus, have yeah. a meal? No, nah, I'm not hungry. Oh, come on, we'll give you something. Nah, it's too much trouble. No, our wives will listen to us. Blah, blah, blah. Nah, did you, did you get it? Yeah. And then he finally said, okay. Yeah. I was saved three months, preacher, and I read that, and I came to my Pharisee Southern Baptist wife, saved when she was nine, and I said, <laughs> I said, honey, look how Jesus conned these guys. I think she hit me with a broom or a frying pan or something and hit me in the head. Don't you call my Savior a con artist, you know? I came back 10 seconds later. I said, okay, honey, look how Jesus fooled these guys. <laughs> Do you understand how deep that verse is? That's God's heart. Yeah. He wants you to praise him, but he can't yeah. ask you. Yeah. He has us telling you, right, preacher? Yeah, right. That's good. You're right. Amen. Praise is voluntary. Mm -hmm. Let me hurry here. I'm almost done. Next. Boy, this is good. Praise is stimulated. Praise is stimulated, number five, or responsive, or reactionary. In other words, well, how do I praise God? Hello? What's the second thing that all four creatures, different creatures, share in common besides wings? Second thing is eyes. Mm -hmm. Hello? In the front of their head and in the back of their head. He's got eyes in the back of his head. You know all these expressions they trace to the Bible. Yeah, right. Well, what, what, what does that mean? Well, if you, if you don't think you're praising God enough, mm -hmm. look, get your eyes off this stupid thing and then look that way yeah. or that way. Mm -hmm. Open these eyes or these eyes. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? Well, start with he. Start with these. Where'd you come from? Yeah. Right, right. What in the world did God bring you out of and through? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. Open these. Yeah. Where are you going? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Or just uh, look around, look. Where are you at now? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. He's good. There's, a pre there's a preacher in Tennessee named Jerry Monday. Some of you know him. He's a camp meeting preacher. Yeah. <clears throat> Pastored four churches, wrote about 150 songs for God. Yeah. He, was in country, he was in country music. Right. First time he opened for Johnny Cash, he said in Nashville, Johnny Cash was pushing him up to the microphone because Johnny Cash was stoned out of his mind, and he had no depth perception. He didn't think Jerry was close enough to the mic, so he's pushing him. He's banging into the microphone. There's a video of uh, Tammy Wynette singing, Don't Come Home with Drinking with Loving on Your Mind. He's over there playing a dobro with hair out that out big out there. Here's a picture of him on the Johnny, uh, here's a picture of him on the Johnny Carson show. Can you believe that? On the Tonight Show right there, playing the uh, dobro. But that's three years before he got saved. He wrote some of Dolly Parton's biggest hits. Mm -hmm. But he got saved. Yeah. He said, God delivered me from all that garbage. Mm -hmm. Listen, his best known song, he sets it up by saying, I, I was wondering what the first word of the Bible was. So I looked at the first page and I found out the first word in the Bible was in. Yeah. And then I got to wondering maybe what was the last yeah. word of the Bible. Yeah. Turned to the last page and looked, found out it was Amen. You got a problem praising God? Are you deadhead? Let me ask you one question. Are you in? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Real deep stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Amen. All right, that's point five. Let me give you six and seven and I'm done. We going to get something to eat? <laughs> Praise God. Some of these preachers are cheap. Yeah. They are. If we're going to go that route, Jimmy John's or Jersey Mike's, if it's going to be a cheap place. <laughs> Praise is elementary, positional, diverse, voluntary, yeah. stimulated. Number six, praise is laborious. Verse eight says they rest not. Yeah. Listen, neighbor, the Bible tells you what the last days are going to be like in Daniel 12. Mm -hmm. Men shall be running to and fro, yeah. and knowledge shall be increased. 
You get to the end days, if that wall over there is the Garden of Eden and that wall is where we are tonight, 6,000 years across the wall right here, look. Mm. We're about right here now. Yeah, yeah. Look at here. Here's where we are now. Yeah. Look over. Look, neighbor. Yeah. Right here, right here, that's when the railroad was invented, 1830s. That's the first time human beings could travel faster than Adam and Eve could in the Garden of Eden, 18 to 25 miles a day on the back of an animal when that railroad is invented. First time, look. They called it the iron yeah. horse. Yeah, yeah. When I got saved, I was working for British Airways. We had a Concorde that could fly you to London in three hours. Mm. Over here, look. See where you're living tonight? Mm -hmm. Men are running to and fro like crazy. Mm -hmm. But you know what the Bible says? Be still and know that I'm God. Yeah, right, right. Can I tell you what the preachers are doing? They're pulling their hair out of their head. I see several bald heads in here. <clears throat> Jack Howe's famous bald joke. He said, if you're bald in the front, you're a thinker. If you're bald in the back, you're a lover. If you're bald all over, you think you're a lover. That was Jack Howes, not me. <laughs> I don't tell jokes like that. What was I saying before I got on that joke? Somebody help me. The quicker you help me, the faster we're going to have a closing prayer. This is not Pentecost. I can't. What is it? Huh? Any Yankees in here? I can't hear these Southerners. Oh, they're, thank you. They're pulling their hair out. You know why they're doing that? Because they're trying to figure out some way to get their people. The Bible says, be still and know that I'm God. Yeah, yeah. You know what his burden is tonight? Getting you 21st century Christians still enough while you're running to and fro. You can't help. Your grandparents grew up watching the grass grow and waving at cars. Right, yeah, and now right. we're living like this. Yeah. That's why we're not you're very right. spiritual. Yep. Yeah. Prayer is laborious. Praise is laborious. They rest not. It takes work to schedule in devotional time with yep. God, yep. to read your Bible and to pray right. and to praise Him, you know, because we're so busy. Yep. And, and God knows that. That's why it's a struggle and a battle in the last days. I'm done with this. Look. Number, number seven, praise is consistent. Most important point in the truth. The three is the most life-changing, but this is the most important one probably most important one, praise is consistent. Hello? They rest not day and night. Who can't praise God in the daytime? You got a raise, something good happened to you, your mother-in-law left town, I mean, whatever it might be. Who can't praise God with a good report? Can you praise God in the nighttime? I, I, I can't hear you. Eighteen days ago, I preached my son's funeral. And I'm not looking for any sympathy. Not for five minutes. Not for five minutes. I'd be a fool if I didn't use it. Eighteen days ago, I preached my oldest child's funeral, 46 years old. Had a heart attack driving a car in Arkansas. Went off the highway and hit an embankment and went 86 feet into the air, airborne. Thrown out of the vehicle, no seatbelt on. Car rolled. He was found next to the vehicle. In the mercy of God, it was an open casket funeral. God preserved him, his body for his mama. Listen, neighbor. I pre I'm not lifting myself up. Should preachers practice what they preach? Like everybody, but especially preachers. Did Paul tell Timothy, be thou an example to the believer? Is that what he told him? I buried my son 17 day, 18 days ago. I, this is my 17th sermon today since I buried my son 18 days ago, and I am not lifting myself up. That pastor knows me for 20 years. I, I'm trying to make the point that I can make. Go look at my devotional I posted about the three mistakes Christians make when grieving. One, blaming God. Two, overdoing it. Keeping the grieving going on forever and ever until people are all walking around eggshells around you all your whole life anymore. And three is forgetting that people still need help now. Get back to work helping people. But I'm telling you, neighbor, it's not easy to praise God when the lights go out. But you're still supposed to do it. Hey, let me close with this. I don't know how long ago it was. A couple of months ago, I was in Missouri preaching. And it turned out the church I was preaching in, the same man 
that had got on the Facebook post back in New Hampshire. Remember I started the sermon about the Washington Monument? The one idiot said, it's good, sick, sick, sick. And the, die, the guy on stage four cancer said, I'll remember that sermon to my dying breath. I preached in his church in Independence, Missouri. He was still alive. You know what he did? He came out to, to the service. It took him 20 minutes to get out of the parking lot. Look, off his deathbed, off his hospice bed, look. Because that sermon blessed him so much, look. And preacher, I had a different sermon ready to go. I changed it in a New York minute and re-preached this message, a very short version of it. He's in the back shouting it out, look. He came back the next night, Wednesday night, and then he went to heaven not long after that. He went out shouting. Can you praise God in the daylight? Who can't do that? Can you praise him when the lights go out? Let's bow our heads for prayer. What an easy church to preach in, Pastor. So much liberty in here is unbelievable to me. Why don't we stand, if I can have somebody at the instruments, <clears throat> the piano, organ, or whatever, how you do things. This is an easy church to preach to. The Lord speak to your heart this morning about anything. You can maybe get ready to play something. If you get ready to play, this is, well, this is this kind of church. You don't have to drag the invitation out. God touched your heart, come ahead. Go ahead and start playing something. You got to set it up in half the churches I go to. Church like this, hey, did God do anything extra special for you lately you want to praise him for? Well, come on down here then and praise him. And maybe the Lord is going to speak to you tonight. He didn't talk to your heart this morning. But somebody here needs to get a, a new handle on that personality that you have. Just kneel here and think about that a while. Say, Lord, do I really have something unique for you? And listen to that little voice say, you sure do, son. Or you sure do, dear. Talk to him a little bit. I know you love him. But think about it. I don't want to say how lonely he is. What do you think he has the Lord's Supper for? Don't forget me, please. Don't forget me. Isn't that something? Maybe God put you in a heartache. Got a, I got a message from a lady yesterday. Preacher, I, got, I watched your funeral sermon of your son. It helped me. I got four sons. They all made professions of faith. Then my husband left me. They're all four, all five of them are adults. They all profess to be atheists tonight. What a broken-hearted mother that is. People got heartaches all around this country, heartaches all over this room. Can you praise them? Can you praise him in the nighttime? Come on. Tell him how wonderful he is. Tell him how wonderful he is. You're all closing in on God when you're doing this. Draw an eye to God. You're doing that right now. Try to remember that more when you get out of here. You're not a bunch of deadheads. A lot of you are probably real good at praising him. Can't we ratchet it up a notch? Anybody can do it, neighbor. Preacher, you all know your people here. I don't know if anybody's lost out here. You know your own flock. Why don't you come and take charge, preacher? Very much liberty here. the preacher right there at the end, if you're here and you're lost, boy, there's a God that would love to save you. Talking about giving him praise the way we should. Don't leave here without knowing him. Maybe you've been to the altar, but you didn't do some business about being saved. Maybe you've been brought to the reality of who God is. Get a hold of somebody before you leave here and get some help. He's worthy, whether it be night or whether it be day. He should be praised. He is a good God. Worthy of our praise. Great truth. Great preaching. I won't leave here without minding him. Amen. All right. Everybody look this way. Service tonight, 6 o'clock, 5.30 prayer time. Go home and meditate on these truths. Preacher goes back. Yeah, that'd be good. He got some books back there if you'd like to get some. Amen. Good stuff. Feed your spirit and soul. Amen. Paul said, he said, bring the, the cloak and bring the books, and especially the parchments. Thank God for good books that will stir your heart and give you what you need. Amen.
God's still got great men and women writing good stuff to help people down the road. Like he said, nothing takes the place of that old King James Bible, but thank God for good stuff that'll help you, amen. Amen. All hearts clear. Invite somebody to church tonight, amen, be in your place and be ready to worship the Lord. The Preacher's Fellowship is this Friday, amen, here at our church at 7 o'clock. Of course, Wednesday night service and the night service. And we do have a spring revival planned. I need to give you the dates on that. Brother Mark Wesley from Oklahoma will be coming, great man of God. So, I mean, we'll give you the dates on that. Be coming up soon. Amen. Who knows? Lord might come back for it all. Let's make sure in our own personal selves who God has made us to be pleasing and praising Him the way He deserves it. Amen. That's why we're here. We're here for His glory and His pleasure. Amen. Let's dismiss in prayer. Amen. Brother Ted Mack, how about dismiss in prayer? Thank you, Lord.